we have breaking news in the data world where Shiny, which is a R package for creating web applications in the R programming language, is now available for Python. And it's currently in the alpha version. And the release of Shiny for Python is a natural next step for R Studio, which has just been rebranded as Post-it. And in this blog post, we can learn about the thought process on how RStudio, which is also the name of the RStudio IDE, which might be confusing because the company is called RStudio and the IDE is also called RStudio. And so in this rebranding, they mentioned that the Post-it brand will allow it to extend beyond R because it's also creating packages, libraries, and also tools for Python and also Julia, as well as other languages as well where they have recently released the Shiny for Python. And they've also recently announced the Quarto, which is a scientific and technical publishing system, which if you take a look at it, it's very much like R Markdown, where you could generate reports, export it out as HTML, PDFs, PowerPoint as online books, and many more. And so back to Shiny, many of you might have already known about Shiny as a web framework in the R programming language where you could create interactive web applications and the web apps or shiny apps looks very much like this shown in here. And this is demonstrated inside a R Studio IDE. Back in the days when R Studio released Shiny, there weren't many low code web frameworks for R and Python. So you could say that R Shiny was probably one of the first to provide a low coding web framework. And shortly after, there's Dash from Plotly, and then there's Streamlit, Gradio, PyWebIO, and quite recently, there's also from MLJAR. And so while browsing the internet today, I discovered that Shiny is now available for Python and is currently in alpha. And so let's take a look at this in this video. So as we already mentioned, Shiny is in alpha version. And so there's going to be a lot of API changes in the coming days and weeks. And you could get started by clicking here, or you could also play around with some of the examples that they have. And these are some of the examples. Let's click on examples. And then on the left-hand side here, there's a panel where you could play around with the various Shiny applications that are implemented in Python. And so here we're gonna have a look at the basic app. So the syntax here looks very much much like the one from R Shiny, in the sense that for developing a Shiny app, you need to have two main components, the app UI and also the app server. And so the same logic also applies here. You have a UI and then you have the server. And in R, you could have this two components in the same file, or you could also separate it into two separate files like the UI.R and also server.R. I'm not quite sure whether we could separate that into separate files, for example, as UI.py and server.py. So I'll probably figure that out in the coming days when I have more time to play around with the Shiny app for Python. And so let's have a look. So in order to generate this example, interactive app where it is a slider. And when you change the slider, you get a different value here. C4 is selected, and then it applies the multiplication to two. And then the final answer is 128. And so at the first glance, you can see that you need to declare the various syntax for the placement of the slider that it belongs to a fluid page element. And then the two functions here displays the slider bar and also prints out the results output in a verbatim text box. And then right here in the server part, it requires three separate lines to type generic boilerplate for the app. And then you have the custom function here which will form the mathematical operation in the app. And then finally, in this line, you have the declaration that app UI and the server function here is part of the app. And they are serving as the input arguments to the app function from the Shiny library. And so let's have a look at the app with plot. And then you could use matplotlib to generate the histogram plot here. And in a similar fashion, as mentioned already, you need to have this boilerplate code here so that it knows which part is the user interface and which part is the one responsible for computation. So the user interface here will have the 
sidebar and also the main panel outputs. And then what is going on behind the scene is a part of the server function. Okay, so what you see is part of the UI. And what is going on behind the scene on the back end is part of the server function here. Okay, so there's two elements, as I've already mentioned, and it is the same logic as the one from R Shiny. So if you're coming from R and you already know about R Shiny and you know how to create R Shiny apps, then if you need to use some packages, libraries, and Python, then using Shiny for Python might be easy for you because you might be able to repurpose or make minor modifications to your existing R apps and then kind of like plug in the Python libraries into your app and then you could have it working in no time. And and for those coming from Python, you might notice that the code syntax here might be a bit verbose in comparison to low code frameworks like Streamlit or Gradio. And so let me know in the comments section down below, should I make tutorial videos on how to create shiny apps for Python? And so if you made this far into the video, please make sure to hit on the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, happy coding.